Ananda's from chapter 4, Sutra. Then King Prasenayit, for the sake of his father, the late king, arranged on the day of morning a vegetarian feast and invited the Buddha to the side rooms of the palace. He welcomed the Tathagata in person with a vast array of superb delicacies of unsurpassed wonderful flavors and himself invited the great Bodhisattvas. Commentary King Prasenayit, whose name means Moonlight, was born in India on the same day the Buddha was. When the Buddha entered the world, the light illumined the entire country. King Prasenayit's father thought the light was connected with the birth of his son, so he named him Moonlight. The child later succeeded the father to become the ruler of a country in India. For the sake of his father, the late king, the 15th day of the 7th lunar month marked the close of the summer retreat for people who had left the home life. On the 14th, 15th and 16th days of the month, the Bravarana is held, as I explained earlier. The 15th marks the Dulambana festival. But the 15th day of the seventh month was also the day King Vasanayit recognized to be the anniversary of his father's death. It is referred to indirectly as the day of mourning. Since one did not speak explicitly of one's father's death because of the pain and sorrow involved. Filial people find it very difficult to be reminded of their parents' deaths, remembering how good their parents were to them and how they have been unable to be sufficiently filial in return. They experience deep regret. Also mention of the anniversary of King Prasenna's father's death was avoided. Everyone knew of it and the king chose that day to make offerings to the Triple Jewel and to do various good deeds. One does good deeds and makes offerings on such a day in order to rescue one's father and mother from the house and rescue and secure for them rebirth in the heavens. When Mahamaud Gandhiyana first obtained the six spiritual penetrations, he went exploring the, to find out where his mother was and discovered that she had fallen into the house. Why had his mother fallen into the house? It was because when she was alive, she liked to eat seafood and most especially enjoyed fish eggs. How many lives do you suppose there are in a mess of fish eggs? A vast number. Because she ate quantities of fish eggs, thereby taking a vast number of lives and because she did not believe in the triple jewel, because she did not believe in the Buddha, did not believe in the Dharma, and did not respect the Sangha, she fell into the house upon the, her death. And then, even Maudga Yayana, with his six spiritual penetrations, could not save her. It upset Maudga Yayana to see his mother in the house enduring so much suffering. His samadhi power was shaken, and so he used his spiritual penetrations to go to the house and he took with him a bowl of rice which he gave to his mother. When his mother was alive, she had been very stingy if she was asked to give a little money. Her heart and liver began to ache and her very flesh hurt. It is said that parting with money is like cutting off a piece of one's own flesh. That's the way it was with her. She couldn't bear to give it up. As a result of her stingy habits, what do you suppose she did when her son brought her the bowl of food? He grabbed it with her left hand and covered it with her right hand. Why did she cover it? She was afraid someone would steal her food. The place was full of ghosts. But she found a spot where there were none, and she stealthily took a bite of food. Who would have guessed that as soon as she put the food in her mouth, it would turn to burning coals, 
so that she couldn't eat it. Why was this? She was a hungry ghost, and like all such ghosts, had a stomach as big as a mass drum and a throat as narrow as a needle. As a result, she couldn't eat. Even when she tried, her comic obstacles caused the food to turn to fire. Confronted with this situation, Mahudra Vyayana, despite his spiritual penetrations, was powerless. He had no mantra to recite, and so he returned to his teacher. He used his spiritual penetrations to bring himself before the Buddha. He knelt and said, "My mother has fallen into the house. I have come seeking the Buddha's compassion to help me rescue her." The Buddha answered, "Your mother has fallen into the house because she slandered the Triple Jewel, was not respectful toward the Triple Jewel, and did not believe in the Triple Jewel." You can't save her by yourself, Mahud Galayana. You must rely on the united strength of the Sangha of the Ten Directions in order to save your mother. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you should make an offering to the of the finest vegetarian foods and drinks that have not been tasted by anyone before being offering being offered to the Buddha in the Sangha. By making this offering, the way karma of the virtuous high sangha members of the ten directions will then be able to save your mother. Otherwise, there is no way you can save her. On the appointed day, Mahamaud Gadhyana did as the Buddha had instructed. He asked the great virtuous high sanghas of the ten directions to come and rescue his mother. He prepared a vast array of superb delicacies of unsurpassed wonderful flavors, and made offerings to the Buddha. His mother was reborn in the heavens as a result of the strength of the greatly virtuous ones of the ten directions. Since that time, the Ulambana festival has become an annual celebration, a day upon which anyone can rescue his parents of seven lives past. Ulambana is a Sanskrit word which means rescuing those who are hanging upside down. This refers to the extreme suffering of the ghosts in their house, who are as tormented as one hanging upside down would be. The Ulambana is performed especially for releasing those undergoing the painful suffering of being hungry ghosts and enabling them to be reborn in the heavens. The fifteenth day of the seventh month is the day of the Buddha's rejoicing and the Sangha's parabhanvana. On that day, the merit and virtue derived from making offerings to the Triple Jewel is several million times greater that, than that derived from offerings made on ordinary days. That was a king. The day King Brat Senayit chose to offer a vegetarian feast to the Buddha and to make offerings to the Triple Jewel on behalf of his father, no meat was served, nor any of the five edible members of the Illuim family: onions, leeks, garlic, chives, and shallots. From all of those foods, make people murky and confused. He invited the Buddha to the side rooms of the palace. Why wasn't the banquet held in the main hall? The main hall was where orders were signed, governmental matters were carried on, and where humane and beneficent policy making took place. The side rooms were reserved for banquets. He welcomed the Tathagata in person. With a vast array of superb delicacies of unsurpassed wonderful flavors, the king himself went out to welcome the Buddha. The banquet consisted of the finest array of foods and drinks, vegetarian dishes that were cooked to perfection, and their flavors were the finest to be had. And himself invited the great Bodhisattvas. The king himself signed the invitation. 
or perhaps he himself went to invite them, saying, I wish to request the presence of all the great Bodhisattvas to come and accept my offerings. He invited all the great Bodhisattvas, as many as the sands of the Ganges River. How much food do you suppose he had to prepare, prepare for such a gathering? It must have taken a lot of money, but King Prasenayit was probably not stingy like Mahudgalyayana's mother, so he prepared a great offering. Sutra In the city were also elders and lay people who were also prepared to feed the Sangha at the same time, and they stood waiting for the Buddha to come and receive offerings. Commentary the king wasn't the only one who was prepared to make offerings to the Buddha. There were also elders and lay people in the city. These are the ten virtues of an elder. Honorable name, lofty position, great wealth, heroic deportment, deep wisdom, maturity in years, pure practice, perfect propriety, the praise of their super uh, fears the treasure of those below them. They are perhaps the royal blood or of otherwise noble birth. They hold high-ranking positions as officers. They are really rich. Their awesome air is stern and severe. Their sagging energies are powerful and sure. They are courageous, awesome, magnanimous, and forthright. They are decisive and never procrastinate. Their wisdom is great and profound. Elders are usually between 50 and 70 years old. They conduct their affairs in a clean, undivided, correct, and straightforward manner, and their integrity is impeccable. They are very lofty in their ideals. They are extremely courteous to everyone, never arrogant or condescending. Although their manner is heroic, they do not bully people. When meeting someone, they first bow from the waist and then ask after his health. They are never in the least bit crude. They are spoken of highly by their superiors. The people put their trust in the elder. They all wish the best for him, wish him to be a great official, hope he will be wealthy, hope that all good things come his way. Why? He in turn will use his wealth and position for the good of the people. He enjoys giving. The more money he has, the more it pleases everyone. As a great official, his very effort is bent on pleasing the people, and the masses look up to him. Lay people refers to cultivators who are householders. They cultivate in their households. The, the elders and lay people were also prepared to feed the Sangha at the same time. The elders and lay people were also aware of merit and virtue derived from making offerings to the triple jewel on such an important day. Important day, the day of the Buddha's rejoicing the day of the Sangha's Bravarana, probably the vegetarian food they prepared, in no way compared to the delicacies offered by the king. However, so the text makes no mention of superb or wonderful flavors. And they stood waiting for the Buddha to come and receive offerings. They stood in their doorways waiting for the Buddha to come and receive their offerings speculating among themselves. He'll come to my house today. He's going to receive my offerings. Not only did they wait for the Buddha, they also were waiting for the lofty and virtuous members of the Sangha to come and accept their offerings, and so sincere were they that they remained standing during their wait. Today in Thailand, Burma and Sri Lanka, Donors kneel to make their offerings to the Sangha. When a member of Sangha comes along, they add their offering to his bow and then bow to him. Then he returns to the monastery to eat. Sutra The Buddha commanded Manjushri to assign 
the Bodhisattvas and Arhats to receive offerings from the various vegetarian hosts. Commentary The Buddha commanded Manjushri kings, can issue commands, and so can the king of Dharma. Thus, the text says that the Buddha commanded Manjushri Bodhisattva to assign the Bodhisattvas and Arhats. How were they assigned? They would depend upon how many Bodhisattvas there were. Perhaps they were assigned to go on the grounds individually, or perhaps they were divided into groups of twos and threes. The great bishops and the great arhats, as well as the Bodhisattvas, were commanded to receive offerings from the various vegetarian hosts. This means that they went to the homes of the elders and lay pupil and received their offerings. Although the Buddha has millions of transformation bodies, he would never display his spiritual penetrations just for the sake of a meal and go to the various donors' homes to appear as transformation Buddhas and seek arms at each door. It would never be done that way. If the Buddha were like that, then spiritual penetrations would be cheaper than being cut. And so he said to Manjushri, You assign the Bodhisattvas and great Arhats so that they can go to each home and receive offerings. Sutra, only Ananda, who having accepted a special invitation earlier, had traveled far and had not yet returned, was late for the apportioning of the Sangha. No senior seated one on a uh, career was with him, so he was returning alone on the road. Commentary Only Ananda. This is the whole reason he got into trouble. He was alone. What had Ananda done? He had accepted a special invitation earlier. Perhaps a month or so in advance, someone had made an appointment and said, On the 14th day of the 7th month, you certainly should come and receive offerings from us. So he went. In fact, he went early. And so on the 15th day of the 7th month, the day when everyone was receiving offerings, he had traveled far and had not yet returned. Basically, we should not accept special invitations. For instance, if there are 10 Samhans here and you invite only one to go to your home to eat, you're issuing a special invitation. The one who has received the special invitation should not go. Why? The rule in Buddhism is that all the Samhans of a way place should be invited for the offerings they gather. But sometimes people who like good food ignore the rule and accept the special invitations they are given, thinking, why should I look after all of you? What causes that I get my fill? My special invitation is a response to my blessings and virtue. They pay, a, uh, pay no attention to others. Ananda probably had a bit of fondness for eating good food. Now think about it. During the close of a summer retreat, it was absolutely impermissible to travel, and yet Ananda had accepted a special invitation and went out to receive offerings. And so he had already gone against the rules. He had already committed an offense. He was invited for the 14th of the month, and so he probably went on the 13th. After eating on the 14th, he stayed the night, planning to return early the next day, and he was late for the opportunity of the Sangha. He didn't make it in time. No sooner seated one, um, Akariya was with him, so he was returning alone on the road. People who have left the home life should go in twos and threes. The three would perhaps consists of a young bishu, a senior bishu, and an akariya. A senior is the one who has held the precepts purely for more than 20 years and therefore is seated in the front of the assembly. Akariya is a Sanskrit word which means a teacher who 
exemplifies the rules. He is a master who follows the rules and understands them. There are five kinds of acharya. The anacharya under whom others may live the whole life, anacharya who transmits the precepts, um, kamadana acharya, anacharya upon whom others may rely, and acharya who transmits transmits the teachings. One person can be all five kinds of a career. A person who is qualified to lecture the sutras and speak dharma is an a career who transmits the teachings. He may also have a way place where people may draw near him to study and practice, which makes him an a career upon whom others can rely. He may also teach people the rules and transfer merit to them every day before the Buddhas, asking the Buddhas to wash away their karmic offenses and to cause their good roots to increase. That makes him a Kamadana Akariya. He may teach others how to request the precepts, what to say when they receive them, and how to reveal violations of precepts or other offenses before he bestows the precepts upon them. Then he is an Akharya who transmits precepts. He may receive people as left home disciples, in which case he is an Akharya under whom others can live the home life. An Akharya is one who has to realize the way. He aids you in your cultivation of the way. He stands beside you and uh, admonishes you. Don't commit offenses, that is an acharya. But Ananda didn't have a seno seated one or acharya with him in order to help him. Guard the mind and be apart from offenses. And so he walked right into trouble. The worst thing he did was to be out returning alone on the road. Basically, People who have left the home life should always travel in pairs. If you truly have somebody power, then to do things your, on your own is not a problem. But if your somebody power is not sufficient, then it is very easy to encounter a demonic obstacle. It is very easy to be affected by external states. These days, there were many young monks who travel around by themselves, and that's very dangerous. Still, we should all thank Ananda. If he hadn't gone out alone and gotten into trouble, how could he have come to understand the Suragama Sutra? We wouldn't have any opportunity to understand the Sutra ourselves, because Shakyamuni Buddha wouldn't have been presented with the opportunity to speak the Suragama Sutra to teach us how to cultivate Samadhi. The fact remains that Ananda benefited us a great deal by his action. Sutra, on that day he had received no offerings and so at the appropriate time Ananda took up his begging bowl and as he traveled through the city begged in successive order. Commentary since he had failed to return in time for the appointing of the Sangha for that day's vegetarian offering, he had received no offerings and so, at the appropriate time, Ananda took up his begging bowl. Bowl is patra in Sanskrit, mean, meaning a vessel of appropriate measure. It contains enough, but not more than enough, to satisfy one's needs. As he traveled through the city, he backed in successive order. He went from house to house in Shravasti, Shravasti from door to door. Since some give more and some give less, it is necessary to stop at more than one house. But according to the rules, one does not stop at more than seven houses. If after stopping at seven houses, one has not received any offerings, must do without the food that day. Sutra As he first began to beg, he thought to himself that down to the very last Dhanapati, 
who would be his vegetarian host, he would not question whether they were clean or unclean, whether they were Kshatriyas of honorable name or Chandalas. By practicing equality and practicing, he would not. By practicing equality and compassion, he would not merely select the lowly, but was determined to perfect all living beings, limitless, married, and virtual. Commentary: As he first began to beg, he thought to himself that down to the very last Ganapati, who would be his vegetarian host. When Ananda took up his bow and went to receive food offerings, his very first thought was about his donors. From the very first to the very last, Dhanapati who becomes my vegetarian host. Dhanapati is a Sanskrit word, which is transliterated into Chinese by two characters, which also shed light on its meaning. The first ten. Represents the Sanskrit dana, and means to give, and the second ye means to transcend. The mean of dana pati as based on that transliteration, then is one who gives so that he can transcend birth and death. A lay person who gives offerings to people who have left the home life is called a um, dana pati, one who gives in order to transcend. By the very last donor, Ananda meant the one whose offerings would give him the final amount of food necessary for that day. He would not question whether they were clean or unclean, whether they were Shatriyas of honorable name or Chandalas. He would not notice if they were poor or rich. Shatriyas are the noble and royal class in India. Chandalas Apaches interpret, interpreted in Chinese to be those who kill pigs, because in India the killing of cattle is forbidden. This cattle also included other classes of India traits such as removing dead bodies, butchering animals, and so forth. And so, when Chandalas walked down the road, most people would. Not walk with them. They had to walk on separate road, in order to identify themselves as being low, lower than ordinary people. They were required to ring bells and hold banners as they walked down the road. While practicing equality and compassion, he would not merely select the lowly, but was determined to perfect all living beings, limitless, married, and virtual. He paid no attention to. How honorable might be the person from whom he was receiving order offerings, nor did he receive offerings exclusively from the lowly. He intended to give all living beings the opportunity to plant blessings. When donors make offerings, they plant blessings that will grow and repent in the future. Thus, people who have left the home life are called fields of blessings. One who has the reward of many blessings in is all in always content. So, if you feel your reward of blessings is not sufficient, you should make offering to the triple jewel and plant more blessings. Ananda was determined that every wish of every living being be fulfilled. He hoped that the boundless merit and virtue. Which living basic would be completely fulfilled through him.